In this video, we look at tree diagrams, which is found in the AI course under topic four, statistics and probability, under the subtopic of probability. Now in the um, AI SL course, you'll encounter two types of probability questions, tree diagrams and Venn diagrams. And then in the AI HL course, in addition to tree and Venn diagrams, you'll also have transition matrices and Markov chains. But in summary, under the subtopic of probability for AISL, we have tree diagrams and Venn diagrams. Okay, let's start the theory off with an example. And then as we work through this, we'll touch on uh, why tree diagrams are beneficial and the important concepts to remember. Okay, in this example here, we have a Lego storage box with four blue and seven red bricks, which you can see here. That creates a total, by the way. So we have a total number of bricks in this box of 11. And we are told that Max takes a brick from the box at random and attaches it to his new castle. He then chooses another brick, so the second brick now, from the same box at random. So if I read this question here, even without seeing the tree diagram, I'm thinking, okay, tree diagrams are going to be useful to calculate probabilities because this is a multi stage event. Max selects the first brick, which we'll call stage one, and then he selects a second brick, which we'll call stage two. So tree diagrams are very useful to calculate probabilities of multi-stage events. One event happening, so it might be flipping a coin, and then a second event happening, perhaps rolling a dice. Okay, let's complete part A here. So we're asked to complete the following tree diagram, and this touches on this first important concept here, the, the, um, the text in purple here, the branch probabilities add to one. So in the first stage, Max, Max's first selection, the probability of selecting a blue brick will be the four blue bricks that are available out of the um, total of 11. So it's four and 11. Now the probability of selecting a red brick will be the seven out of 11. So I can write here, this is going to be seven out of 11. Now the important concept here is that these two probabilities need to add up to one. And, or in other words, even if you had three different events, so blue, red, yellow, let's say, all of the branch probabilities that come out of a certain point need to add up to one. And if we just check that here, four and 11 plus seven and 11, and we hit enter, we get 11 on 11, which is one. Okay, so that's the first stage completed. Let's now finish the second stage here. Now, important concept here. You need to think when looking at the second and third stages, is this a question of with replacement or without replacement? Now, what do I mean by that? And let's just read the question here. Max takes a brick um, from the box at random and attaches it to his new castle. So once he has taken that first selection, stage one, the number of bricks left in the box is no longer 11. I'm gonna cross that out. We actually only have 10 bricks left. So this right here is an example of without replacement. If the question said that Max takes the brick out, looks at it, and then puts it back in the box, that would be with replacement, and we would still have 11 bricks in the box, and that affects the probabilities in the second stage. Okay, so let's talk through this first probability here. If Max selected a blue brick first, so a blue brick, let's just take this away here. A blue, a blue brick is now no longer in the box, so therefore we don't have four blues, we actually only have three, three out of a total of 10. So the probability of Max selecting a second blue brick, if he selected a blue brick first, would be the three blue available out of a total of 10. So this here would be three on 10. But the probability of selecting a red brick second after selecting a blue brick first would be there's still seven red bricks available out of a total of 10. So this red brick here would be the probability of selecting a red brick on the second selection, seven on 10. Let's now talk about if Max selected a red brick first. So I've, I've, I've added one back to the blue here because he didn't select a blue first. I'm gonna take one away from the red and then I'm gonna cross this out and change this to six. So again, there are still only 10 bricks remaining in the box. We have six red and four blue. So the probability of selecting a blue brick second, if he selected a red first, would be the, blue, the four blue available divided by a total of 10. So this here would be four on 10. And for red, if he selected a um, red brick first, we have six red bricks available out of a total of 10. So this would actually be six on 10. 
And that right there answers part A, which is a completed tree diagram. Let's now talk about part B, and part B involves the second and third important concepts when dealing with tree diagram questions. We are asked to calculate the probability that both bricks chosen by Max are the same color. So the same color can occur if Max selects blue and then blue. So this, and I'm gonna use the word outcome here, blue and blue. But another way we can have two bricks the same color is if Max chose red and then red, this outcome here. Now to calculate the probability of Max selecting blue and then blue, we multiply up the branches. This is the second important concept here. So the probability of going blue, blue would be four on 11, multiply up the branches, three on 10. And that is equal to six on 55 as a fraction. Now, same process now, the probability of outcome, red selection and then red selection, we do the same process and we get seven on 11 multiplied by six on 10, and that results in 21 on 55. So just to recap, when we want to find the probability of one outcome, we multiply up the branches. But of course, let's go back to this question here. We actually want to calculate the probability that both bricks chosen by, random, uh, by Max sorry, are of the same color. So it can be either this top one, blue, blue, or red, red. So you may be wondering, well, what happens when we have two outcomes? And this ties into our third important concept here. When we have multiple favorable outcomes, we just simply add their probabilities together. So the answer to part B would be the probability of outcome blue, blue, six on 55. And then we add the second favorable outcome, red, red, 21 on 55. And that comes out at 27 on 55, or as a decimal, uh, just less than uh, 50, 50, so 0 0.49. So that is equal to 27 on 55, and leaving your answer as a fraction would be fine. Okay, so just to summarize, tree diagrams, very, very useful when calculating the probabilities of multi-stage events, and it's important when you're thinking about the stages to think, okay, is this with or without replacement? Okay, that concludes our video on tree diagrams. I recommend practicing some of these questions in the probability section of the question bank.